Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Lost Ark. And in this one, I want to talk about the cube, which is another end game activity. Yes, there are still more to talk about. There are so many of these, if you guys have missed in the videos on the channel, we've spoken about pretty much all of them so far. But the cube is another one. It is admittedly a little harder to get into, but once you're in there, it is a pretty fun activity. It involves randomized floors, changing both positive and negative effects that have occasional surprises. And basically, it's a activity you can work your way through, and the further you get, the better the rewards you earn and it's just in general pretty fun to experience so in this video i want to go over what it is how you get it all that good stuff so if you have any questions by all means let me know in the comments down below if you enjoy this you find it helpful a like would be super appreciated and if you've been enjoying the lost art content lately make sure you subscribe because we've got plenty more coming your way so to begin with first things first how do you access the cube well the cube again is an end game activity and if you look on your map it will be marked by this icon here it is something that unlike other end game activities like chaos dungeons or guardian raids you can't simply walk into it you need to have an entry ticket and in order to get the ticket that can come from chaos dungeons keep in mind these are a random drop and they're a rare drop as well. You can see them listed in the rewards. They are not guaranteed, so you can go quite some time without even getting one. And of course, that therefore does lock you out the event. But they do have a chance of dropping from the second floor boss. As you can see here, the rewards go very fast. If I slow this down, you can see I got my tickets. Once you have your tickets, you can then go to the entrance of the cube. You can then either go in solo or you can go in as a team. It is worth definitely going in with some backup because the floors can get pretty challenging. And if you die in the cube, then you're out. And of course, without a ticket, you can't get back in. So you get whatever rewards you earned up until that point. But with that being said, how does the activity work? Well, first things first, you have the setup area, much like you have started to experience with a number of different end game activities. Once you are in the cube and you have left this area, then you cannot change your battle items or other things in your build. They will be locked out. So use this wisely to ensure that you are prepared correctly. When you go in, you'll walk across this pretty cool platform and you'll then be presented with an arena and in there you'll of course have to battle some of the challenges. There are different types of floors, you have boss floors which can contain one or two large bosses along with a few regular monsters, you have elite floors which contain mostly elite monsters, you have regular floors where you just typically fight normal ranged or melee monsters with the occasional elite. You can sometimes stumble across lucky reward floors which are rare bonus floors that can reward silver or a treasure chest containing either engraving recipes or stars breaths and there are also the survival floors which is my first encounter with the cube be very careful here there is basically a lot of enemies that will explode you want to dodge absolutely everything it doesn't matter if you think you are over leveled these things will clap you now of course every time you complete a floor you will then follow the pathway to the next one and you keep going Whenever you're on a floor, you're given a timer for each of these. Ideally, you need to defeat everything in the time limit. If the time limit does happen to run out, it's not over. There will be some ghosts that will spawn and they will basically do massive damage. You need to avoid these while still trying to clear the remaining monsters. If you do that, you can still proceed. But ideally, you want to take things out within the timer. And of course, as you progress throughout your floors, you will see the reward chest on the side will increase in quality. It'll go from basic, no rewards, up to like a bronze chest, silver. So ideally, you want to survive as long as possible to get the best chest possible. Keep in mind that when you go to different floors, you get one random effect. Sometimes they are positive, sometimes they are negative. Think of these as either buffs or debuffs, essentially. They're displayed in the top right corner of the screen, so you can of course inspect them to find out what they are, but keep this in mind because sometimes they are pretty damaging. Now when it comes to the rewards, ideally completing the cube takes anywhere from 15 to 19 floors to clear, and of course the maximum reward is the diamond chest. These can contain silver, cards, stars, breaths, and even engraving recipes, so they are definitely worth your time. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. That's a quick rundown on the cubes. So in summary, you go out, you do your Chaos Dungeons, hope you get a ticket. If you get a ticket, you can either go in solo, match, or go in with other people that also have tickets. You work your way through the floors, ideally not dying, taking out the enemies, surviving the encounters, going for as long as you can to boost up the chest to get the best chest possible for the maximum rewards. It's a fun end game activity, so definitely keep your eyes on your inventory in case you got one of the tickets without realizing. In the meantime, if you guys want to find out about some of the other endgame activities you can do, then check out this video on screen if you want to learn more about ghost ships.